Now we're out here hunting a very elusive creature, okay? This is like the Loch Ness Monster of Calgary. Nobody's seen this thing. No, nobody's, nobody's seen it very often, but I know it's around here somewhere. Now it's a very quick creature and thing moves super fast. So that's why I brought with me the Sony A57. Now the cool thing about this camera is its translucent mirror system. Unlike a regular SLR where the, the mirror pops up so you can take a shot, this mirror stays down the whole time and light actually goes through it. Now what that lets us have is a stunningly fast frame rate. I could push 10 frames per second on this camera, 12 if I need it. So, well, I thought I heard something there. So this camera is going to give me that frame rate that I need to capture this creature. We're going to take it out here, see if we can get some shots of it, and hopefully find what we're looking for. Now when it comes to handling on the Sony A57, this thing's got an incredible grip and feel. You know, for such an inexpensive camera compared to its bigger brothers like the A65 and A77, the grip is solid, the camera's got a nice weight to it, it's a really impressive feel overall. Now we've got a plastic shell on the Sony A57. We're not going to get any weather sealing, but it does help to keep the weight down to 539 grams. It's got a nice balance, a nice feel, just enough weight to it, not super heavy like an A77. LCD screens, very important on this camera, and Sony make beautiful screens. 921,000 on the back, so you get really nice resolution. It's very nice for manual focusing. But of course, because this is a translucent mirror camera, we're dependent on the electronic viewfinder up here. It's 1440K, very, very clear. It's not an optical SLR viewfinder, but as far as EVFs go, very, very usable. Now, button layout on Sony A57 is very thoughtful. It's all intuitive. I like the ISO button and exposure comp right below the shutter here, nice and easy to set. Mode dial's good too. It's recessed into the body, so you're not gonna accidentally hit it because, of course, we don't have a locking mechanism on it. I really do like the function button here as well. Push that down and I've got quick access to focusing modes, flash controls, white balance settings. It really keeps me out of the menu system, so that's nice too. And I love Sony's exposure system. The way they show shutter speed and aperture, it's very, very straightforward, great for beginners. So all in all, love using this camera. Now the Sony A57 has actually a really nice sensor. 16 megapixels, very similar to what you find in something like a Sony NEX5N or a competitor like the D7000. Now that sensor's APS-C size gives us a really good combination of resolution and low light performance. We're gonna take a look at that in just a bit. But one of the interesting things to note on the A57, with that translucent mirror, there is a bit of light loss. You see, most of the light's going right through the mirror onto the sensor, but a bit of it is kicking up into our EVF, and that's how we can see our electronic display. It's about a third of a stop that you're gonna lose on this camera, folks. Is that a big deal? I mean, it's a third of a stop. It's not gonna be too big a deal, but your camera does compensate for it. If I set 100 ISO on the Sony, it's gonna take that light loss into account. So it's almost like I'm shooting ISO 125. It is gonna be a bit higher. Will that have implications for our low light? Well, we'll take a look at that in a bit. Overall though, it means a fast frame rate and still a very, very good sensitivity for low light. All right, so let's see if that third of a stop really makes a big difference here in low light shooting. Got a nice tree shot here. We're gonna start our ISO shots at 400 and work our way up from there to 16,000. Now 16,000 is about the official maximum on the Sony A57, but you can push it to 25,600, but now we're stacking multiple JPEGs together to do it and keep the noise down. Looking at the camera, how does it compare against its competitors? Well, noise is very similar to the competitive sensors. I do find that when you do push it up to about 3200 ISO, noise starts to creep in. And Sony is certainly using a bit of blurring to control some of that noise. So we get some softness creeping in. I don't think the third of the stop makes too big a difference. I think you could certainly put this up against a D7000 and get very, very similar results. So that third of a stop, not too big a deal to worry about. Now definitely one of the most exciting things about the Sony A57, with that translucent mirror, we get fast, fast frame rates. I can push 10 frames per second on this camera with no restrictions. Full resolution, focusing, exposure, everything I want. But if that's not fast enough, I can push it to 12 frames per second. Now it does do some interesting stuff. It crops even tighter 1.4 times. We're down to 8.4 megs of resolution. But if you're doing wildlife, you need a bit of extra distance, and you need that speed, this is pretty awesome.
Now the Sony A57's rocking a very good buffer rate and processor speed. We've got a fast card in here. Sony says about 21 shots in a row, but let's just see what the camera can do here. Hmm. So I'd say it's closer to about 13 shots in a row, but still very quick, good recovery. If I hit playback, I'm ready to see the photos I just took. So not bad for an expensive camera like this. The Sony A57's got a pretty killer video system here. Pretty typical frame rates. So you got 24p for that cinematic look. We also get 60p. We're gonna play with that here in a bit. There's no 30p mode. The camera shoots 60i, and then we can just input that into 30 frames per second, and we pop it into our software. Interestingly enough, though, Sony's decided to leave out 720 as a resolution. So we get standard def, we get 1080, that's it. We can downsample though, no big deal. Now, clip length is pretty stunning. 29 minutes on a single clip. However, if you use the super steady shot, we're down to nine. It's still a good length, but you gotta watch out for that. Let's check that out. Try some slow-mo, see what we get. Now, one of the unique things about SLT cameras like this with that translucent mirror is, we get very quick focusing during video, and that's very rare in SLRs in this range. The other great thing is, well, I know it's electrical viewfinder, so maybe not as good as an optical viewfinder for stills, but for video, it still works when I bring it up to my eye in movie mode, and that's fantastic. If I get sun on the back of the screen, I can use that and still get a nice view. And I will say this too, the EVF is so good, I can manually focus very accurately with it. Now, with that live view and autofocus, one downside. I do find if you're not using an external microphone, you're gonna hear zooming and you're gonna hear the motor going while you're shooting video. So do watch out for that. Of course, if you need an external microphone, you've got a, a mic input right there to round things out. So pop that in, get rid of that focusing noise, and we're good. All in all, a really complete video system. Sony A57s use phase detection autofocus, so it gives us a very responsive result here. We've got 15 points that we can choose from, and this thing will focus with the fastest of SLRs. You know, it's nice to have that reliable, quick focus. We've got spot focus capability, or we can let the camera decide amongst wider or tighter zones for dynamic action like sports. So really, really nice system here. Now for manual focusing, the A57 has an excellent system here. We've got three levels of peaking, and we've got also three colors we can choose. White, red, yellow, whatever suits the scene best. And of course, this is great for video as well as still help. The other nice thing about the manual focus, we've got two kinds of magnifying choices. So if you need to get closer, get that fine-tuned focusing, you've got all that capability. This is exceptionally good for video and for stills as well. Now the Sony system is quite complete. Got some very nice lenses here. Now Sony have been working hard to fulfill a good lens lineup. We've got a lot of macro lenses, many, many zooms, and Sony G lenses are now featuring a lot of 2.8 Pro lenses. But of course, one of the big appeals is Zeiss lenses. Sony and Zeiss have a partnership. They're making gorgeous lenses like this 85 mil 1.4. Very impressive. Now, interesting enough, Sony did buy all of Minolta's X technology. So if you have Minolta autofocusing lenses still around, those will fit here too, and they do work very, very well. It's a very interesting flash system too. They've got a very unique rotational system here on their flashes. One thing though that I really don't like about Sony is that they still use the Minolta flash shoe. It's a reverse shoe here, which means that no other accessories are gonna fit. No other flashes are gonna go on there, and you have to use adapters if you wanna add PC sync ports or pocket wizards, things like that. So that can be a real, real pain. Otherwise, the flash system works great, and even on a camera like this, A57, at its entry-level price, you get wireless control of flashes with the pop-up flash, so that's a nice touch as well. Overall, the Sony system is very complete. You've got excellent lenses, and you've got Zeiss lenses if you want to get that extra push. Lots of adapters as well if you want to be shooting video. All right, folks, so who's the Sony A57 for? Well, I mean, it's a great price point for a camera like this, very solidly built but it's not gonna survive rugged environments. You know, a lot of water, a lot of dust, things like that. What it does give us though is a camera and a price point with an incredibly fast frame rate. And the focusing speed we've also shown to be very, very quick. So if you want a camera to shoot wildlife, sports, action, catching kids, 
this camera is a great way to go. And on top of that, if we want to shoot video and have something that works a lot like a camcorder, this camera gives us a lot as well. So certainly the Sony A57, I'd say highly recommended. As long as you're okay with that EVF style, it has a lot of cool benefits. All right, folks, so we certainly put the Sony A57 through its paces today. And Jordan, I would like to thank our students. I mean, Marlene came out, Ashwin, Candice, Mary, Johnny, Darwin, Jose, Maria, and Raul. So thank you very much for coming out to help us with that. It's too bad, though, folks, we couldn't see that creature today, that Fish Creek creature. I'm sorry we missed that. Oh, up behind me? Oh. Oh, yeah, we got photos there. Well, there we go. He does exist. And thank you very much, viewers, for joining us. We'll see you next time.